2024 Kawasaki Ninja E1 and ZE1 First Ride, revolutionizing city riding with electric power. The primary focus on Kawasaki's all-electric Ninja E1 and ZE1 is their authentic motorcycle experience, prioritizing the look and feel of traditional bikes. They're not positioned as replacements for conventional motorcycles, but rather as alternatives to electric scooters and bicycles, particularly suited for urban commuting challenges. This concept finds particular resonance in regions with zero and low emission zones outside the US, yet it also holds relevance in major American cities like New York and Los Angeles. For city dwellers with short commutes or college students without the means or space for a car, these bikes offer a Kawasaki-powered alternative to costly Uber rides, rigid public transit schedules, or simply walking. But how effective are these bikes in practical urban settings, and can their full-sized motorcycle aesthetic alone draw users to the platform? To explore these questions, we ventured into downtown Phoenix, a city already embracing unique transportation alternatives like self-driving cars. Let's delve into the technical details. Electric motor and batteries. Both the Ninja E1 and ZE1 boast a brushless electric motor rated at 5.0 kilowatts, with a peak output of 9.0 kilowatts. Thanks to the single ratio transmission and electric motor, there's no need for a clutch or shift lever. However, Kawasaki maintains the rear brake is foot operated, unlike the handlebar mounted rear brake typical of scooters and of bikes. The bikes feature removable dual lithium-ion batteries concealed beneath a faux gas tank, each weighing 25.3 pounds. These batteries offer a nominal capacity of 30 A uh, and a nominal voltage of 50.4 V, totaling a capacity of 60 A. Uh. With a claimed range of 41 miles, they're clearly tailored for urban commuting, though planning a midday recharge, such as at work, is advisable for longer rides. The bike's batteries can be recharged either while attached to the bike or taken indoors for more convenience, plugging into a standard 120V wall socket using the same charger. It takes a total of 7.4 hours to fully charge, with each battery requiring 3.7 hours individually. When on the bike, both batteries can charge simultaneously, but once removed, they can only charge one at a time unless you opt for a second charger. Partial charging is also an option. Kawasaki states it takes 1.6 hours to charge a battery from 20 to 85 percent, akin to typical phone charging habits. The design incorporates regenerative braking, allowing energy generated during deceleration to replenish the battery when the rider eases off the throttle. This feature activates when the batteries are at 60 percent charge and gradually reduces as they near full capacity. A separate 12V battery powers the bike's dash and lights, but the E1s won't engage the ready state without the lithium-ion batteries installed. Additional features include road and eco-riding modes, along with a walk mode for low-speed movement forward or backward. The Ninja E1 claims a top speed of 55 mph in road mode and 40 mph in eco, while the ZE1 reaches up to 53 mph in road and 40 mph in eco, defaulting to eco mode when the charge drops below 35%. An e-boost function elevates the Ninja E1's top speed to 65 mph in road and 47 miles per hour in eco, and the ZE1's top speed to 63 mph in road and 45 miles per hour in eco. This feature, activated by a handlebar button, operates for up to 15 seconds at a time to minimize impact on range and battery temperature. E-boost status, battery charge, speed, and all relevant information are showcased on a 4.3-inch TFT display. Additionally, Kawasaki's Radiology app allows riders to access ride details and monitor battery status. Chassis and Design Featuring a steel trellis-style frame reminiscent of other Kawasaki models, the chassis of the Ninja E1 and ZE1 boasts model-specific rigidity and strategically low mounting positions for the electric motor effectively lowering the bike's center of gravity. In terms of weight comparison, both the Ninja E1 and ZE1 are lighter than their showroom counterparts, the Ninja 500 and Z500. The Ninja E1 weighs 309 pounds, while the ZE1 weighs 298 pounds. This stands in contrast to the ABS-equipped Ninja 500, which weighs 375 pounds, and the Z500, which weighs 366 pounds. While the geometry remains relatively consistent, reflecting Kawasaki's commitment to maintaining a traditional motorcycle appearance and feel, slight variations exist. 
The bikes feature a wheelbase of 53.9 inches, rake of 24.4 degrees, and trail of 3.7 inches, with suspension comprising a 41mm fork and preload adjustable shock. Both bikes exude a motorcycle-like aesthetic, differing primarily in bodywork and riding posture. The Ninja E1 boasts clip-on handlebars mounted atop the fork tubes, while the ZE1 opts for a one-piece handlebar setup, offering a more upright riding position. Despite variations in fairings, the bikes retain a consistent personality. Riding Experience Although direct comparisons with the Ninja 500 and Z500 were not feasible during testing, the E1 models exhibit the characteristics of full-size motorcycles. Notably, they showcase Kawasaki's trademark attention to detail and build quality, distinguishing themselves from cheaper e-bike alternatives. The limited range, albeit disappointing, may be more acceptable if the bike is primarily intended for commuting purposes. Despite its sporty appearance, the Ninja E1 maintains comfort levels similar to the ZE1 and offers superior wind protection, making it the preferred option. Rider comfort is generally satisfactory, although taller individuals may find the foot peg to seat distance slightly cramped. Overall, both models offer comfort and proportionate dimensions conducive to enjoyable riding experiences. While Kawasaki's recently introduced Ninja 7 Hybrid adds complexity to their two-wheel lineup, the E1s offer a hassle-free starting experience. With ride modes being the only real option, skipping the range-focused eco mode in favor of road mode makes the most sense due to its superior performance on open roads, while eco mode is better suited for congested areas or conserving battery life. The refined throttle response and power delivery make the E1 suitable for new riders, yet they offer enough performance to tackle open roads with ease. It's rare to encounter a downtown area where traffic moves faster than you or the E1s can handle. This is especially true when utilizing the E-Boost function, which delivers exhilarating acceleration that can leave you laughing inside your helmet during the initial uses. However, activating this feature while navigating traffic and merging with other vehicles can be a bit challenging. With more experience riding the bike, this becomes easier, allowing for more enjoyable rides, although it's crucial to keep an eye on battery life. Weighing around 300 pounds, the E1s boast lightweight handling, complemented by well-balanced weight distribution and neutral steering. This results in effortless cornering and a solid feel on the tires, thanks to the sturdy chassis and strategically placed batteries. It's evident that Kawasaki invested resources into ensuring the E1s handle like true motorcycles. The lightweight construction and focus on urban commuting meant Kawasaki didn't need to delve deeply into their inventory for suspension and braking components. While functional, these elements don't prioritize high-performance characteristics. The suspension, although soft and lacking in control through travel, effectively absorbs typical urban road imperfections like potholes. Similarly, the brakes provide sufficient stopping power for city speeds but lack an aggressive initial bite and additional features like a span adjuster. In essence, comfort and practicality take precedence in this setup. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.